Let's take a look at Quadrifuzz, a multiband distortion and effects plugin from Steinberg that comes with Cubase Artist and Cubase Pro. In this video, I'll give a quick rundown of the plugin and its features, and at the end, I will show you a few ways in which you can use this plugin to add distortion, character, and grit to your sounds, as well as delay. All right, now onto Quadrifuzz. Let's start the tour with the frequency band editor, which is right here in the middle of the interface. You can see there are four sections divided by these three orange dividers. Here's where you will set the width and the gain for each of the frequency bands. To set the width, which is the beginning and end point, you will take one of these three orange dividers, click and drag to the right or to the left. To change the output or the gain of that particular band, you will hover over the center of it and you'll see here, when I do so, it says it's at zero dB. You can click on that and drag it up or drag it down. Another option for adjusting the gain is down below here. You can see it follows my changes down here on this where it says out. As you see, as I drag it, the changes are made above and vice versa. As I drag it, the changes are made below. So you have two options for adjusting the output in this frequency band editor. To the left of the frequency band editor, we have what are called global settings. These types of global settings do appear on a lot of Steinberg's plugins. So once you get a hang of it on one plugin, you'll know what it does on other ones moving forward. So here for this particular global setting, we have an SB button. When you hover over, you can see it says single band mode. It takes the four bands and makes them one. And to revert it back to multiband, you would just unclick the SB button. Next to the single band option, we have what are called scenes. And this is where you can set up different settings of Quadrifuzz within one instance of the plugin. As you can see, scene one is green because it is the currently selected scene. Scenes two through eight are grayed out because there are no settings set up for that particular scene. The moment that I click on scene two, it'll become yellow. And then to go a step further, the moment that I make a change to the setting, you'll see it will become green and it's lit up. And I can revert back to one and that settings and go between. So scenes can work for you in a few different ways. The first way is you can create eight different scenes and settings. Let's say you have a, an electric guitar you love to use. So you can set up eight different types of distortion for that particular guitar and then come up and save it as one preset. So then when you load the one preset, eight scenes or eight settings for that electric guitar are available for you to audition. Another way to utilize scenes is automating a change between your scenes. You would do this in a similar way to which you would automate anything else you do in Cubase. That's by activating the right function, the right automation. And then when you play the track and make changes between the scenes, it'll open up an automation lane for you. I'll, I'll demonstrate like so. So as you can see, when I made that change, it saved that automation, created this lane. So then I could come in here and say, you know what? I actually want to push it back um, a couple bars and line it up here and then refine it as you like. I'm going to undo that automation and we'll move on. Now, one functions of the scenes here is copying a scene. So let's say you want to A, B test and just make a slight change to scene number two. And so what you would do is you would come down to this copy scene button, this red button here, click it, and then go from two and press scene three. So the copy will take your currently selected scene and then paste it to the scene that you select next. To the right of the frequency band editor, we have the mix and output knobs. The mix is the balance between the process and the unprocessed signal or in other words, the wet and the dry signal. The output determines the level of the signal. Next, we have band settings. Each of these four band settings relates to the four frequencies that we've set up above. And within the band settings, you have three utility buttons here. We have the mute, which silences that particular band, the solo, which solos that particular band, and only one band can be soloed at a time. And bypass allows the signal to move through the plugin without being processed by the rest of the band settings. So it comes through completely dry as far as this plugin is concerned. Now I'm going to audition these and show you what they do. Now just to show the difference between mute and bypass. 
Now, before we get into the types of distortion we have available, I want to touch on some of the features within the band settings that appear for each one of these types of distortion, starting with the drive knob. For the tape tube distortion and amplifier settings, it's going to operate in the same exact way. This determines the amount of the type of distortion. When it's all the way to the left as it is currently, it's at zero distortion. As you turn it right, it's going to introduce more and more until you get to the maximum of 10. And like I said, it operates the same way for the tube, same way for distortion, amplifier. When it gets to decimate, it's different. And we'll talk about that when we get there. Next, I wanna talk about the in and out. So this is basically saying, what is the level of the signal coming in for this frequency band on the left? And then what is the output Put after distortion is introduced. That's the output. The other knob that is across all the different types of distortion is the gate. Now this gate operates as any gate would. Now if you're unfamiliar, basically what you do is you set a threshold. You set a value that says if the audio signal is below this value, the gate is closed and no sound comes through until it peaks over where that gate is. The second it hits that gate, it's going to open up and the sound is going to come through. Right now you can see the default is that the gate is off. As I turn the knob, there's going to be a numeric value below. And also over on the in meter, there's a little orange indicator that's going to be a visual representation of where the gate is set. So anything below, the signal's not gonna come through. Anything above, the gate is gonna open up and allow that sound through. Let's just do a quick rundown of that before we get into the distortion types. I'll show you the gate in real time. You see nothing, 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 and as you bring it down. Now, time to go through all the different types of distortion, starting here with tape. Tape simulates the compression and saturation of analog tape machines. Analog tape machines were used for recording audio prior to digital recording. They would record audio to tape and there would be tape reels running in real time. Now we have the benefit of using the characteristics of tape while having the luxury of the ease of digital. When tape is selected, I do have an additional option here below. And when you hover over, it's going to say tape mode dual. So tape machine reels, you could have a single or you could have dual. They're both going to have slightly different types of characteristics as you will hear as we audition it. Next after tape, we have tube, which simulates analog tubes, which are audio drivers. You find them in things like guitar amps. Sometimes you can find them in headphone amplifiers. And just like tape, there are some additional options below. You can have one tube, two tubes, or three tubes. Let's go ahead and audition that. Next, we have distortion, which stands for distortion. You introduce a gritty, fuzzy tone to your sound. And as you can see below, an additional knob has appeared next to the gate where we can determine the level of feedback for the distortion. So let's go ahead and audition the distortion and as well as showing off what happens when we increase or decrease the feedback. After distortion, we have amp, which simulates a guitar amp sound. There are three options here. You can have a clean amp, you can have a crunch amp, or you can have a lead amp. So let's go ahead and audition those. Last but certainly not least, we have Decimate, 
So decimate allows you to obviously decimate the sound. You truncate or downsample the sound. So when you downsample, it generates artifacts and distortion. So as I mentioned previously, the drive button changes. So now instead of determining zero to 10, the amount of distortion here with decimation, you take the amount of bits for the sound. So 24 bit is really high resolution. It starts to the right at 24 bit. And as you turn it left, you downsample. And that's when you're going to start hearing distortion and artifacts happening. Now we have four different types of mode that are just called mode one, mode two, mode three, and mode four. Mode one and three are a little nastier and noisier, while modes two and four are a little more subtle. We have another option next to our gate, another knob called S and H. This sets the amount by which the audio samples are decimated. Now I'm gonna show you the decimator and I'm gonna solo it so you can really hear what is happening to the sound as we start to downsample it from 24 bit to one bit across the four modes. Modes. And if you notice when it went to 24 bit, there was no distortion. So like I said, the drive knob kind of flips in the way that you use it. So instead of from going from left to right, zero to 10, you're going 24 bit to one bit, right, left. Now that we've covered the distortion, we are not done. There's still more to dig into with this plugin. Below the type of distortion, we have an option for a delay. Right now it's inactive, so we can't see all that's down there. But once you click on the delay, you'll see it pops open. And here we have the options for our time, feedback, duck, and mix. For time, with the sync button activated, it's going to be a tempo sync. So it's going to be note based on the tempo. So I go one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth. When you deactivate this tempo sync, it's going to be in time. So the time knob truly is in time. Feedback determines the number of repeats that are happening. The higher the feedback, the more delay you're going to hear, the more repeats of that, that sound. Now this mode option, what this is going to say is run the feedback through the distortion as well. If it's not activated, the main sound source will be distorted, but the delay will not. The second you activate it, then the distortion will also be on your delayed repeating sound. Duck determines how much of the delay ducks down below your original sound signal. When you have it turned all the way up, it's really going to act like a side chain. The mix, again, determines the balance between the wet and the dry signal. And then down below here, we have options for stereo imaging with the width. You can have it go down to zero, very mono. You can have it be stereo image to 200% of the width and get really wide. As I mentioned before, you have your output for additional output and then the panning as you would think. It says a negative 100% that's the left, 100 to the right. And then the mix here, allowing us to balance the wet and the dry, the process, the unprocessed signal for band number two. So let's go ahead and preview the delay. Now, as promised, I'm going to show you a few ways in which you can use this plugin in your productions. First off is obviously going to be on your drums. Then I'm going to show you how to use them on a guitar. And then I'm going to show you how to use it on a vocal and also as a delay send. And one of the great things about this plugin, tons of presets if you wanted to start off with something. They have stuff for your drum bus. And as you can see, there are multiple scenes within this preset.
if you have a drum loop or something, throw this on there with some gate action happening. Like this one preset had some gates to chop up the sound even more. If I just want saturation. That sounds cool to me and I also like the way the gate is cutting a lot of the transients of the sound and making the drums feel tighter. Next I'm going to show you how to use it on this acoustic guitar that I have. <laughs> You see how it just adds texture and more flavor to that sound, especially with the decimator hitting those low, low frequencies, but only sometimes, right? Like you're giving your ear something to hear and then you're taking it away. This is a cover song that I did for TikTok called The Damn Truth, written and performed by Chris Knight. I didn't put any distortion on my vocal. This is a gritty lyric and I think it would be fun to hear how it would have sounded if we put a little bit of quadrifuzz on there. So let's go ahead. And let's tweak out a little bit of a sound. Booze and drugs will rot your brain. Too much pleasure brings you pain. But you can die from just about anything. The past is better off left behind. Worry is always a waste of time. And money ain't always the bottom line. And that's the damn truth. an interesting character that wasn't there before just with the sound so there you go i like using the decimator today it gives it a really cool kind of robotic type of sound i think now i want to show you real quick how to set up a delay send with this so you're going to set up your effects make sure it's a stereo output we're going to route our vocal. I'm going to set, I'm going to turn off all these other sends just so you can hear what's going on with the quadrifuzz. Keep that at zero for now to really exaggerate the sound and then put quadrifuzz in. I'm going to go with a single band to make it simple on myself with one delay happening. So when you turn this on, the first thing you're going to want to make sure is that the mix knob is at 100%. And I'm going to want to make sure that the feedback of the delay is going through the distortion. That's the whole reason why we're using this plugin is for the delay distortion. So let's go ahead and listen. Booze and drugs will rot your brain. Too much pleasure brings you pain. But you can die from just about anything. The past is better off left behind. Worry is always a waste of time. And money ain't always the bottom line. And that's the damn truth, the way I see it, that's the damn truth, take it or leave it, it don't change, you better believe it, 
We live in a world of lies And that's the damn truth you go, that's how you set up a delay I can't leave it It don't change You better believe it we live in a world of lies, and that's the damn truth. That concludes this tour of Quadrifus. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. And again, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I will have more Cubase and Steinberg focused content for you in the future. And in the meantime, let's make great music.